before my next guest appears on the program, um, I would like to say we are in California and shortly there will be a referendum and on it will be a proposition called the California Jobs Initiative and it's number 23. And I just want to share what I think about it and what I'm going to do. This is a proposition that is not really funded by Californians, but by Texans, all right? Texas oil companies. And this 23, which says it's a job initiative, is just the opposite. It is to viscerate, to destroy California's green, clean job legislation. So you do what you want to do if you're in California, but I'm certainly going to vote against 23. Now, my next guest is a man who has an interesting profession. And if you've ever gone into any of these great exhibitions and you've seen these signs, Google, SAP, IBM, Citibank, and you may have wondered how they get made. You may wonder how who makes them? My guest is Dan Ingerman, and he is the head of Media Morphosis. And one, his main specialty is to make these big signs for the SAPs and other companies. And his other interest is to make art. And I met him through uh, an important lady in the great Palo Alto area, Carol Harrington, and he was selected to make posters of my climate change art series. Dan, how are you? Great. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. First, tell me, when somebody comes to you and says there's going to be a big show, a big exhibition, and they want to sign, do they bring you the artwork? In many cases, the, the, they have designers on their staff or outside services where they'll create the artwork and usually they have uh, a certain booth size or a certain limited space. They'll also give us the criteria if it's something that's going to ship long distances and be reused or maybe a one-time usage. They may indicate a budget. We'll, we'll review both the size of what they need and the artwork that they have available and we'll come up with solutions that'll fit their budget and, and also you know, carry out their needs. Five years ago, maybe, but not 10 years ago, the word sustainability was not really in our lexicon, was it? Right, well, the, the technology changes. Right. Sustainability, uh, and we did hear about Greenpeace back then, but there was very little discussion of green and sustainability 10 years ago. And I want to know, when your customers come to you, are they now concerned with green products, you know, signs and things from you? Well, we're concerned with the, the green solutions, so we do a lot of research on what's available. And even the ones who don't bring it up, we offer that as a solution. There are new products coming out constantly so we will get them from our supplier and we'll actually test them out and see if they print well, if they're durable, if, if there's a large price difference. And we'll make suggestions to the client so we can stay as green as possible. You know, there's going to be people in Kansas, in Maine, watching this TV show. And do you, I wonder, are some of them going to find this strange that you, a supplier, a printer, you take the initiative of thinking about providing your, uh, your printing on things that will be good for the environment. You think other printers around the world are thinking like you? Well, ho hopefully the people who are watching the show and getting this ed education will ask their printers about these solutions. I think if, if the clientele inquire about it, the printers will, will take the time and look into it for them. Okay. So it's kind of a give and take where us as, as, a, as a producer, we look at the green solutions, 
we also have clients that ask us about it, and that kind of keeps us, you know, current on what's out there. Okay. Um, but are you feeling, now I know where you are. You are for Green Solutions, you know, for your whole printing shop, and I, th I think that's admirable. My grandchildren may be appreciative of that, too. But are you seeing more and more of your customers asking for green, the option for green solutions? We, we, we saw an increase about three years ago. And as the economy slowed down, the request for the green also slowed down, because I think it was a, bur a budgetary concern. But we still stay current with what's available, and we try and offer it as a substitution when available. I think as the economy improves, the request will increase with it. Okay. And uh, in terms of ink, okay, you use a lot of ink, don't yes. you? Yes. How has the ink changed, if at all, so that it's more friendly to the environment? As, as far as internal usage, there's quite a bit of inks out there now, soy-based inks and different inks that we, we can use in production as well as recycled paper, both paper made from re in a recycled process and things that can be recycled. The outdoor solutions are still tough because you need the outdoor durability. So we're yeah. still printing on vinyls, we're still printing with solvent inks, things that are not green solutions yeah. now, but again with the change in technology. Okay. So outdoor, it's, it's still a problem. Still tough. The, the weather. But did I hear you say soy-based ink? Mm -hmm. soy, wow. Soy-based ink has actually been around for quite a while for the printing part of the industry, you know, the data sheets and brochures and business cards and envelopes. Okay. Now, I would like to bring up a paint, a photo, and uh, let's see what comes up. That looks like you. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> and on that table, I can recognize, is one of my paintings, and it happens to be called, if I, God, i got to get this right, Liberty Fuse to Coal and Oil. And this is your second line of business. I mean, your first is, is really very commercial. This yes. is fine art. Mm -hmm. And what's different when you make a poster and the, then when you make a big sign, what's different for you? Well, for, as far as the equipment goes, it may not be a difference in equipment, but for me personally, it's, it's nice to work on the creative end. It, they're, they're all important, and I feel honored to be able to produce all these large format things, all this marketing things for both large and small companies. But when I hit the fine art pieces, I feel the creativity that's gone into them and, and it's a talent that I may be able to manufacture pieces, but it's not a talent that I have in being able to paint. So when I see something, you know, like these types of paintings, I, I really get excited. I want to try them on different materials. I want to try profiling them to color adjust. I want to get the artist in to view smaller swatches and really kind of tweak it and really make it you know, look just like they, they've intended it to be. Yeah, and needless to say, you make me feel good when I feel, hear and feel your excitement and your interest because, you know, <laughs> it's uh, my work. You're, when you're working on my thing that, you know, is having an impact on you and makes me certainly feel good. Um, do you have any advice for people like myself, artists, on how we can be more effective working with someone like you? Well, I, th I think for the artist, the understanding is, is what it takes to go from what they've created to us producing the finished product. I think the expectation is that it'll, it'll look like what they've put on the canvas the first time around or, or you know, what they've supplied to us digitally. And even, even small percentage changes in the printing process will create fairly substantial changes in the finished piece. So what I would say to the artist is, you know, be prepared to view some proofs and, and go back in and make the changes necessary to get the product they really want. Okay, so it's, the artist should have some 
some meaningful expectation. Don't expect the first run to look like what you made. That's correct. And I want to share, when I look at the posters you have made of my art, I think your posters look better <laughs> <laughs> than my art. Now, now, you are in Palo Alto? We're in, in Mountain View, right at the oh, Palo Alto border. Mountain, Mountain View. Dan Ingerman, yes. Media Morphosis. And is this the first time your family has been in the printing business? And we're almost finished now. So I'm third, third generation printing. My father and grandfather were in printing. Good. My guest has been Dan Ingerman. He runs a printing operation in Mountain View, California. I'm Michael Killen.